Thank you. Total so, quick change, I guess, the theme talking about instrumentation. <clears throat> we have a uh, visible through shortwave infrared uh, blood vector imaging microscope. That's the microscope. Well, so, um, but the uh, capability we've been, we've had and are improving in the uh, IMR and the MME department. Um, so, so I'll tell you some of the, what we now have up and running. Um, first of all, I'm with so I'm manager of the IMR. People, I'm everybody's familiar with that or not, but it's a service center that we host uh, crystal growth and characterization. And we also work with people using shared use equipment and this tool being one of those pieces of equipment. So it's available to anybody who wishes to use it. Um, so the, the microscope is a, uh, it's Olympus uh, BX51. We recently, uh, thank you, John, have a new microscope body so we can have a transmission illumination, um, which allows us to do filtering of different wavelengths. So that's a big improvement. Um, have a camera uh, that we acquired a couple of years ago that um, can see out to a 1.7 micron, so it gets a little bit out of the infrared. A motorized stage uh, to do scanning, uh, X, Y, and Z. Then we have infrared uh, corrected objective lenses for 10 and 20x. It's much better, uh, um, much better light throughput. Uh, for software, we're using micro, micro manager, they call it microscope manager. This is all based off ImageJ, which is a National Institute of Health software that they've developed. And then data analysis, another flavor of ImageJ called TG, we use uh, due to, to analyze the, uh, the volumetric images that we get. And then the camera, I'll point out, is that it uses a hidden gas detector. It's been thin, so you can see from visible 400 nanometer all the way up to 7.7 microns. So you can register your images in visible where you can see things, and then register your infrared images to that. So for analysis, I think that's a nice option to have. But that, yes, it's the computer control spectral capabilities. Um, we're using a the halogen light source, they actually produce a lot of light in the infrared, so long as you don't filter it, you have a great light source. And again, because we now have a transmission uh, capable microscope, we can put filters on the top of the field aperture and the transmission uh, stage and just shoot, pick out what wavelengths we want to look at. Um, so it's just then a matter of buying the right appropriate filters for what you're trying to study. The imaging optics again. That's we have this is the wavelength uh, correction for the 20x IR objective microscope. You see, you go from 40% in the visible up to about 90% in the infrared. So it's we don't doesn't take very long to acquire an image. And then the uh, camera uh, Ally Vision it's called the Gold Eye G130 with the Sony sensor. You get a flight sensitive all the way out to uh, just 1.7 microns. Um, so, for example, a uh, sample of Santop Swain gave me, or Magesh, I guess, actually, um, of a uh, cadmium telluride with inclusions. Um, and you can see, I guess, short auto, I think it auto ran as I was talking. <laughs> uh, the, uh, let me go back if I can. And the, uh, Okay. This is for people that don't do micro, use microscopes very often. Depth of field <clears throat> is an important point in this. So for 20x objective, you get about six microns of focal distance. Um, <clears throat> in a 10x objective, you'll get about 20 microns of focal distance. So you have to, I guess, when you're doing your scans, take the appropriate step sizes. We can have about one micron for scan and control on the the depth. So you can accommodate uh, different, uh, depending upon what you're looking for, you can uh, again adjust your Z scan. This take about uh, 200 micron in depth into the sample. Um, and then you can see the cadmium telluride is uh, black looking when you, in, under visible light. Under uh, at, uh, This is 850 nanometer transmitter light. It's quite transparent. And then lots of inclusions. I don't, I don't know the story of the sample, so I can't comment on that. It's good to show it. Yeah. 
Oh, um, for image acquisition, so that was one image for stage in one position. You can stitch together multiple positions. <clears throat> and then using uh, software within the image, image J, you can actually uh, st stitch these images together. Each of these four images is actually a stack, in this case of 21 images. So I did 25 micron steps through the thickness. I think 400 microns of the sample. And uh, so it's really straightforward to do. They have a tile creator where you can pick, make a square array. You can pick some rectangular geometry of your choosing. Then it'll, it'll combine these together. You can pick, you can choose your overlap so it can stitch. Our stage is a little bit old, so it, you need to do some, uh, do some overlap and so it can Position it, it's like five, see about a five micron uh, movement uh, in the stage positioning. I think if we get it fixed, it can be down to one micron, they claim. So, but this is the kind of thing we can do, and it's fairly straightforward to do. Um, then go to Fiji, do analysis. Um, again, you have these four images, you can drop down 200 microns of depth. You can kind of see where the surface uh, can. Inclusions are where you get these shadowy uh, block blockages of light over the top. I can still see things underneath there quite clearly. And if you look at the the black uh, under the 200 micron depth, the black inclusion, that'll be what we go through with the analysis here, where we actually do a threshold of the image, and you can see that it then identifies that inclusion, and that's number 770. Look. So you go through it, it'll pack out the inclusions, and it, the software is capable of then knowing that inclusion extends throughout the stack of images, and so it only label it as one inclusion, not an inclusion for each layer on the film. So the software seems to work quite well. Um, we've just started exploring how to use it. It's certainly far more capable than what I'm showing here. So I think it's uh, I think a lot of possibilities here. So inclusion. Um, Nice, very nice microscope system. Um, again, I think uh, Job McCloy gets some credit for uh, funding uh, a lot of little bits and pieces that we've improved on over the years. Uh, so in terms of scan range, you can do 114 by 70 uh, millimeter area. The working distance objectives, these are long working distance objectives. So you have on the 20X, which is what these images were from, you have an eight millimeter uh, working distance. So you can do fairly thick samples. Um, Future capabilities, you can see from the images that the, the light uniformity is not great. The condenser lens on the microscope is set for uh, biological imaging, so it can't accommodate the thick glass plate on the scanning stage. So it leads to, leads to that type of uh, light, so non-uniformity. Um, and we can also get computer-controlled filter assemblies for the microscope so that the microscope manager can actually swap filters while you're doing your image scanning. So it's one of the differential IR image would be visible and pay, you know some some way with infrared you could acquire both images as a scanning at each position and stage. Um, yeah, and they have cameras catch, capturing these images about 10 millisecond per image, so it's it was about 10 minutes to get get that uh, get those images. So it's pretty fast. And a significant improvement over what was uh, what it what it, what it could do. Anyway, that's uh, that's where we're at. Thank you very much.